Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? Oh, it's so hot, Andy. How hot <laughs> is it? <laughs> uh, too hot. Uh, it's too hot for me because I like it in maybe the 60s, 70s. Um, that's like perfect for me. But I don't oh. know about like in San Diego, because you guys are kind of by the ocean, I think. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it's colder over the ocean breeze, isn't it? It's 10 degrees, uh, usually 10 degrees cooler at the coast than it is inland. And um, hey, Wendy. And so it's a little cooler there and they have cloud cover. So the cloud cover will come all the way to my house, uh, but then it goes away. <laughs> right. And I don't know what's going on with this crazy um, uh heat wave that we have going here but it's like 97 every day and i think we get a little bit of a change um after sunday maybe sunday or after sunday but yeah i was like you could tell guys i'm in a different room now because this one has uh, or is it behind me air conditioner in the window and i go i just can't yeah. can't do this anywhere else it was just way too hot but i did i gotta say i did jump in the pool <laughs> prior to coming here um so anyway it is mis miserable it's breaking records everywhere makes you really kind of think as to you know where are we going in the future and right. i know that it's even it's all over the world and um um uh, they're setting records in other countries so i have a friend who's going to go he always summers in portugal and i'm like how's that gonna go and he says well i'm you know south is really awful right now with the heat but he said i'm going to be up where they're saying it's the 70s right now and i said take me with you he said you can go with me <laughs> okay <laughs> yes that'd be so great to have in the 70s but anyway we got a little business to take care of and then we're going to talk about today talking to ghosts or talking to the other side we want to I want to teach you too tonight how to actually see spirits, how you can practice at home to see spirits. I just saw Carlos. Hi, <laughs> Carlos. Carlos is in the house. Uh, yeah, do some kind of like Carlos he, is in the house. He he messages me and he's he tells me he loves it when you when you uh, he he says you're his favorite. Oh, psychic. Oh, yeah. But when you call oh, him out, and all that he just loves it. So, oh, well, we have to. He's our devoted yeah. uh, fan, and um, we love him. Um, so we're going to be talking. I'm going to teach you guys how to actually see a spirit and how I did it because I was really like, I don't know, you say envious or whatever of the other people, the mediums saying, oh, there's grandma and there's somebody walking by. Right. I just see shadows and fast things and all of that. And so finally I said, talk to the other side. I said, okay, how can we do this? So I will teach that tonight along with what to do when you talk to a ghost, that's earthbound spirit. And then when you're talking to um, the angelic realm and your guides. So we're going to talk about how we talk to all of them and, and um, best to, to communicate, but we need to take care of a little business. Um, first, let's talk about Fridays and um, our gift card giveaway, Andy. Um, so we found that we're not getting people private messaging us with their address so that we can send them the card. And so the thing is, is that we are so thoughtful of the privacy issue that we don't keep anything. And the only thing that's ever kept is kind of the recorded uh, the recorded stuff. But we feel like if somebody wins the card, they do need to reach out to us and send us their address. And so if uh, the last two people that won want to private message me, then uh, I'd be happy to send it out. Um, and they're ready to go. But uh, hi. And um, 
But the thing is, is that we do not keep anyone's addresses, so we're not going to automatically put in. So we're going to make a rule now. What's the rule going to be, Andy? They need to message us. Or they we're not sending the card. Right. Okay. We're right. Just, we just kind of feel like we're so busy and things going on. All we ask is if you win a card, just send us your address, and I will mail it you know, right away. So anyway, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go listen to everything. And then I'm going to try to find everybody and reach out for the last two cards and get the mail to you guys. But if you win, private message us your address, then it's easy for us to grab it and um, put it in the mail for you. Because right. we like to give out stuff. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Uh, now, oh, I'm wearing my, uh, my, my giant diamond see oh let's see can you see it for the one from paparazzi uh accessories i've got my fingers in the way oh Where'd there we go the okay so anyway it's like so big and so nice i just love it and i made sure i went and grabbed it from my jewelry box and um and to show everybody um and then um, we need to talk about uh, the story contest. Uh, did you want to, um, uh, oh, how do you find, how do we find out if you won a card? Is that what you're asking? Is it Griselle? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's Griselle. When at the very end of Friday, mm -hmm. Friday shows, we do some kind of uh, thing like um, one to 100 number, somebody writes their numbers out and the one closest to the generated number wins and we tell you you won. And then they, uh, we say private message us and we'll send you your uh, card. So last, last week was a, a Jamba Juice and the week before was a Taco Bell gift card. So um, on Fridays and we, we say congratulations and everything, but you just have to send us. And I hope you're there on a Friday and win a card. That'd be great. Um, so let's talk about that story contest. Um, so do you want to start, Andy? You want me to yeah. start? Yeah. So um, just to let everybody know, we are thrilled, excited. Um, we finally got our first book. You know, it's been a, a while in the making, but the little book, excuse me, little book of big evil. So we're doing, um, we're doing book two and possibly book three of this. And um, what we're doing now is hosting a contest and there is like a $300, what is it, uh, APR or? Um, uh, approximate that, retail value, yeah. Right. APV value of that. Um, and Debbie's throwing in an Angelina Jolie Maleficent autographed. Uh, that's a eight, eight by loop, ten. Eight by ten. Eight, mm -hmm. eight, eight by ten photos. Sorry, so. I have it. I have it protected in plastic right now. But this is I have uh, her pictures, and that is her unique um, autographed. You know, it's it's very unique, but I just loved it because it it's more in the theme of our show, and so uh, one of the one of the giveaways is this picture, this eight by ten, and it does come with a hologram and a certificate mm -hmm. of authenticity. So it's a real um, signed picture from uh, Angelina Jolie. And what else are we giving out, Andy? A uh, $50 Visa gift card. So you can use that anywhere where they anywhere. take Visa. Uh, mm -hmm. So shout out to you, Visa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I am also, oh, I moved my decks down, but um, okay. well, I'm going to offer. Them. Yeah, I'm going to offer a, a custom tarot deck that I created. And Debbie and I are going to throw in um, readings as well. Uh, what I oh, know I'm forgetting really? something else. There's something I else. There's so really. much. There's yeah. so much in this. So we'll probably throw in some extra things too. 
Right. It's going to be really great. The readings that we're going to give are full readings. You guys is going to uh, uh, be quite a, a, a great thing. So, Hey, Julie. Hi. So uh, the hey, thing Julie. is guys, we need to, how you enter is that if you had a paranormal experience um, and maybe it was scary to you, whatever, if you just write that out and go to psychicfixes.com, there's a little button and hit on the title, hit story contest and go in there and there's all the rules and all the stuff and then go in there and just paste your story in there. And if you have more than one story, you can go ahead and put in several of them one at a time, submit them one at a time, and you get an entry to win the $300 prize for each story that you put in there, okay? Mm -hmm. It's really, you, we're looking for like a thousand words, which isn't very much, but you know, even just a couple of paragraphs, go ahead and put that in there. And one of the great things is, is that we may uh, publish your story in our mm -hmm. next book. And if you want to be anonymous, you can, or if you wanted your whole name in there and we'll put that in yeah. there so you could be famous, but we will also put you in our acknowledgements at the beginning of the book. And this is uh, Andy. That book is Andy's second book. Mm -hmm. And I think I have, what do I have? I have uh, four now. Four. Yeah. But, Four? Yeah, and then you have a few brewing there too. <laughs> yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I am doing uh, one about a garden and how to uh, bring a sacred, um, uh, to get a sacred gar guardian to come in, and all kinds of things about a garden. And I have a lot. I have a lot of things coming in. I'm going to have a book of spells, and for the charming cauldron is my Wiccan business. So. Um, uh, that's going to come out. I'm going to have a store really soon, almost there. And, um, which is really fun because I always make charms for everybody and I teach everybody about charms and Wendy has come and done a lot of things for me. Um, with me, uh, we've made uh, magic candles and all kinds of things like that. Um, Griselle says, do you have samples of true stories you want? Um, you know what? It doesn't really matter. It's if there's an encounter uh, with something um, or, you know, a lot of people, what are they putting? Like, just like, um, oh, one person was saved by a serial killer with by, you know, like maybe an angelic presence, but the serial killer was a real scary thing. And this is a very famous person that that they caught and um other people just like if they see like a, some kind of scary shadow man they're just writing up this what happened there or you know encounters with you know maybe an angry earthbound spirit things like that um one of andy and i have had both of us had things grisel like i saw the hag that was it was scary to people it wasn't scary to me because i was just trying to get down to put my hand through her because that <laughs> that stuff doesn't scare me but she froze me and i was like uh, not happy that's pissed off <laughs> but not me I, oh i tell you what, i was freaked out <laughs> yeah I, oh. we both have i believe we both have our hag stories in that in this book so yeah. um the links to all of the books that we currently have out, and Debbie has more, um, is in the video description below. So check those out. Uh, so. so one of the things that I did is I just boosted the post, and it went to over 2,000 people, and a bunch of people grabbed it. So get your stories in, and... Um, because they're going to be, you know, more and more people are getting them in now. So please do that as soon as you can. And we do have a deadline. But if you go to psychicfixes.com and hit story contest, you will see um, all the rules and everything there. Okay. And, but, um, and that one, that link will take you all the way to the contest page. But um, just going to psychicfixes.com will get you to the, the homepage that has the story contest button. 
So anyway, we want you guys to to you know have fun and we're i'm so excited that there's 300 dollars there and carlos asked full reading carlos we can we do readings various readings both andy and i in our profession where it might be a real short one question and it will be um uh so many cards 10 cards or it can be an hour it can be a half hour it can be 20 minutes you know um celebrity crush I did that once, yeah. <laughs> for my, but we're going to go ahead and make sure that we do a really a good reading for you guys. And I'm sure that I know with my readings, um, uh, they they really vary. I can do I've done one one hour to three hours, so oh, wow. um, it's whatever's needed. Because mm -hmm. I was doing a very short reading today. And I looked at it and I said, I've got to answer the question. So I am going to take more. I always say that it's a minimum of, say, 10 cards for one certain reading package that I have. But it doesn't mean if I see something I need to look at, I take more and more. I end up with 30 cards. That's a, that's a pretty long reading there. And so, but, you know, uh, I make sure and we will make sure that your questions are answered. So we'll probably, I don't know, be uh, an hour reading for that because we were we've estimated the um, the price of this package. So probably an hour is about right for um, I think you guys are going to exceed that value of 300 anyway. What about video readings? <laughs> I don't, Carlos. You first, Carlos. Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I'm, it was a bit creepy, but uh, it was fine. The guy was okay that I did this reading for. But um, when we, uh, the first video reading I did, it's a black screen I'm looking at. I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> uh oh. And he didn't know why that wasn't working. I've seen him mm. before, you know, so uh, since then. But for the first time to see just a black screen, I was like, uh oh, what's going on in the other <laughs> side of the camera? But um, it was, it was good. But I, I guess I done um, for one of the people what, from one of our shows. I did a video reading. Carlos is laughing. It could have been a bad thing. No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so I think that we're ready to just kind of talk about um, seeing spirits and talking right. to them. Now, please, you guys, go ahead and give me all your questions and Andy, all your questions about this um, as we talk about how you can. Um, uh, you know, encounter different spirits and talk to them. So we, in in all my experience, this is what I found is that we have, when somebody passes to the other side, we've got someone who stays around and someone who does transition to the other side and can come and visit. But this guy decides they want to stay. There's lots of reasons that they want to stay. If if their spouse is still here and they're worried, they want to hang out, watch their kids or whatever, or they are angry, they may want to stay. Mm -hmm. And also if they don't know that they're dead. You know, we've got the ones that just are just kind of endlessly living their life over and over or whatever. And they just don't know that they have, you know, expired on this side. So there's a lot of different reasons why they're hanging out. And some are good and and some are, you know, we do want to cross them. One of the things I tell everybody is when you look at the balance of good and evil, guys, just watch the news. What do you think? In my head, I'm thinking evil is getting the, the good part here. And so to go ahead and take somebody and have the other side help with a soul rescue and get them to the other side on our side is going to help that balance. And there's so many uh, that are out there that are earthbound. And, and um, I was just reading something when I was reading something about angels and, you know, um, I don't think it's really defined how many angels that, you know, God created. 
And so there was a lot of speculation that maybe there were many, many, many times over the uh, population of Earth in angels. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so interesting. I haven't finished reading all of that. Say hi, Kathy. Oh, you're, you're, oh, yes, video chatting. Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's part of the risk we take. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I don't know about you, but I don't. I can't get used to it. Sometimes I can, but I just know we're live, so I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I just, I don't know why I get like that. But. I don't know, but you were, you were when we first started doing shows. You would say you're really nervous, like for several, several shows in, and I was like. Of what? Come on. We're just talking. <laughs> I know. But you know what? I never think of anything like, you know, um, you know, like kids bopping in or any I because I go, we're just ourselves, you know. Um, and so um whatever happens, happens. I don't even think about something that might come out of my mouth that's not appropriate. So, you know, it's called mm -hmm. editing later. So it's okay. But um I keep seeing Angel. I think I missed a seeing a couple of uh, people's message. Oh, oh, you seen forty four? My brakes broke as I was driving. Oh, it. You know what? Um, well, I'm. I'm. You know, we're not. I'm not going to do mediumship or anything right now. But um, when you when you get into a situation and you know that there was no other explanation, Kathy, for for you stopping or turning the wheel the right way and you spun around and stopped, then you you really know that that you were helped. And um, you just get that, in, you know, we all have this little intuition and just go and just say, did that really occur? Was some, something with me? And um, I always do a thing, Kathy, when I uh, drive and um, may the white, let's say, um, white light of Jesus surround and protect me or whatever, or get me to all my places and home again. Thank you. You know, I'm always doing a protection prayer. Uh, before I drive, but definitely if they went out and depending on the circumstances that if you, I think if you feel that you knew what to do in an emergency, but how many people know that sometimes you're supposed to like turn into a swerve and you're, all this stuff, you know, you just, <laughs> yeah. you just go and whatever happens to the car happens. And so if you, if you stopped, I, I'm going to tell you this story, Kathy. I I decided I wanted to ski, snow ski. And so I went up, I lived in Yosemite. So I went skiing and um, I didn't know how to ski. I was with the little kindergartners on the bunny thing and learning how, they didn't even have poles and, and learning how to, well, I didn't learn how to stop. I left before then, but just how to get up and how to go straight and stuff like that. Finally, I go, oh, I'm going to go up on the hill, which was a big fat mistake. And I went and got on the lift and I went up to this hill and I said, all I'll do is zigzag, guys. All I'm going to do is zigzag down the hill, right? That isn't the way it happens. So I start zigzagging. And I, the little zags got shorter and shorter until I was going down the hill. And I did not take the little bunny hill lesson how to stop. And I was going down and people were going, because I've never done this before. People were going, you're doing great. And I'm like, I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great. And I was just screaming, I can't stop. What was ahead of me was a concrete building. I would have went off, oh, just wow. off the snow, flown under the concrete path and hit a concrete building. I was going darn fast. And you want to know what mm. happened? Here's the concrete building. And I came straight down and stopped. <laughs> Whoa. Come on. I didn't do a dang thing. And I did not do this or that or whatever you're supposed to do with the skis. I was heading for death. And I just, I just, 
Pup, stopped. And I'm like, I, wow. you know what? I just threw everything off and got off. But <laughs> that was the last time I ever got. I did cross country after that, but uh, downhill, never again. And so, Kathy, that they were there because there was like no reason. When you're looking at, Kathy, depending on how your car was going, when you're looking at, there's no control. And I knew there's no way that um, I knew how to stop. There was nothing in, you know, I was just telling people, get out of my way, you know. And I knew I was going to hit it. There's no way that I could stop. There wasn't any uh, uphill thing. There was nothing. And I stopped. That had to be the other side. And they would. I would have just bro broken so many bones. I was, you know, I was like 19 at the time. I would have just been a broken little mess. So we know that uh, they do come and help. And if you feel that, have that feeling that you didn't have control and knew what to do, you know, um, on the side of the highway up the hill, put on the emergency brake and didn't have any. Good. I think, I think, Kathy, when we're spiritual and you're watching our show, so we know you're spiritual, that we have, we know that our guides are with us and the archangels are with us and um, they're going to, you know, protect us. And it's really great when, when we kind of walk in the spiritual side of things. So we stay connected to make sure that they are right there with us and that we are, we are protected. And so um, that's really great because I don't know, uh, I don't know that my uh, emergency break would have stopped me or kept me from going. Yeah. So, uh, wow. Was there any other questions before we um, keep going on that? Oh, here's so something. <laughs> okay. This does sound kind of creepy. Grizel says, I, like that. I, I had a woman crawl in right. bed the other night. Yeah. Super creepy. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's so common, though. Grizel, that's so common. I have um, my niece even told me that that uh, that the the person that got in bed with her actually like made a presence, like pushed down the bed and 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 change the, you know, the sheets were on this thing. And she thought it was her daughter. And um, and then her daughter like came in later, like mommy or whatever. And she's like, what, who the heck is over here? <laughs> and, it, you know, it was just an, an you know, an <laughs> entity that came in. Um, so Griselle, you know, if, if you, um, <laughs> if you, don't want that you know all you can you can just uh ward your house uh, i had all the crazy things were happening in my house the thing you know r things flying and things moving and big large studs and the hitting at 3 a.m on the door all that stuff and i pretty much wiped that out uh, by uh, war doing the four corners warding. And if you need any of that information, private message me and I will send you a PDF of my book, Protective Magic. And it's really putting in the protections. And, and a lot of people like that kind of stuff happening and they're not afraid of it, then that's fine. I have a lot of people that say, oh no, don't cross my ghost. My cr I want my ghost to stay. A lot of restaurant owners or oh, wow. haunted house people, people that are make money off their haunted area and be it their house or their restaurant or anything they don't want those people going to the other side we'll cross them every once in a while when they're not looking but they don't like that sure just private message me i'll send that to you and i'll tell you how to do it um so i mean we can and it brings in such great energy Grizel. i mean really people come into my house and they just go oh my god it's so comfortable so whatever and it's like yeah you have to keep it up Grizel. you'll keep it up every week once a week okay so um all right let's get back to um so we know that there's a ghost and they're um hanging out they're the ones that will um and there's let me let me even split this a little bit more so we have the ghost that doesn't know they're dead or they're hanging around for some reason and then we have these things that people go that let's say you go to england and there's a castle and there's a guard oh people have seen that guard for 600 years or whatever and they see him up there and this and that and the other well something like that 
do you really uh, talk to it? Does it talk back? No, no history, no historic thing about conversations. They just see him going back and forth like this. But this other ghost, people have talked to in the haunted house or whatever, in the mm -hmm. cemetery. People talk and have a conversation with them. So we got two different things here. So we all know about energy. So if you're into Wiccan or, um, or all kinds of things, the secret, hey, that's the law of attraction. Using energy, then you're going to, I'm going to tell this, imprinted energy is somebody that's done something many times. Like that guy walked his beat, so to speak, in that Tower of London or wherever the heck he is, back and forth, back and forth. He's imprinted his energy in there. That's not a real ghost. He's not going to ever talk to you or anything. That energy's in there. And same thing happened to my sister. Her girlfriend who passed away would always come across the street and back, back and forth, constantly across the sea or and back. And so one day she looked out and here she was coming and she disappeared when she got across the st street. But there was no eye contact and no talking or this or that or the other and it just never happened again. Now that's a little energy that's still there. And um, and also can be, because we're skeptics, we have to be skeptics, is the thought and the memory of seeing her come back and forth could have played into it. But um, so we have two different things here. So um, now, um, so when you talk to a ghost, when we do soul rescues and stuff, depending on the medium now, all mediums can um, have different gifts, can see clearly, see them see through, can um, feel them, can hear them, different things like that. Not everybody can see see what they look like. And I'll teach you in just a little bit. Yeah, in about 10 minutes about that. So um, if you are having um, poltergeist type of stuff happening, or you know there's an entity, the lady is crawling in bed with you or whatever, you can just talk to them like, you, you know, an ordinary person and tell them to leave. Um, you can tell them to get out. Now, if you want them to go, go. You have to tell them to go. And if they won't go through a, a soul rescue, which I can talk about it in a minute, then you need to clear your house and make it uncomfortable for them and they need to leave. And then you need to keep them out. Um, but so you just talk to them, you know, regular. But there are some things that come in your house. So we're going to go to a different thing like Andy Nye's book, The Little Book of Big Evil, when you get... Mm -hmm. uh, something that is a little bit stronger in a negative energy in your house, you can command it to get out. Okay. That's when you have to up your voice, be stronger and tell them, you know, matter of fact, you know, you're getting out, you get out now. And when I got to the point where I was being woke up at 3 AM all the time with those three big bams on the interior bedroom door, I had had it. It was so cranky. I got up and I said, that's it. You're never <laughs> going to do this again. <laughs> and I didn't tell him to get out, but I told him to stop that behavior. And so, um, so you would, you can do that also. Um, now when we have, uh, someone from the other side, somebody who transition come, they're just like, um, you and me and Andy and I talking, okay? So you can talk to them. If you can't hear them, still try to communicate. Now, Andy and I know that they communicate in all kinds of ways, literally in signs, literally the electronics, what um, closed captioning, what else? The phone. Oh my God, the phone. Yeah. Phones. You, you can get the call from heaven and you can get the call from hell. I've had both. <laughs> I've had I the have. one. <laughs> yeah. Which one did you have? Did you have uh, one? Yeah, the demon text. Oh, well, yes. Not, not, not the phone call, but the text, I guess. Texting. Yeah, yeah that came. Never that's had that our, happen before. Yeah, that, well, that was amazing. And um, we do have a, the actual text in the book, uh, the little book of Big Evil. And so, yeah. That's crazy, but I would get the crazy um, garbled stuff and, 
you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then uh, that would come, you know, it depends, you know, when um, I didn't ward my house, man, I was getting those calls all the time. And I ward my house and then I get the calls like somebody, you know, singing heavenly. And I go, oh, that was nice. Thank you. Heaven called. You know, or my sister, my sister that passed away. Hi, is it J J C? Hi. Um, Hi and so, and um, so I had, you know, uh, my sister call, which was really neat. It did take her a while to call. It took like nine months or something after she passed, or maybe a little less than that. And um, I wait. I'm going to tell you guys, if you get a feeling that the phone rings and you get a funny feeling i want you to make sure that you let it go to voicemail and go as long as it needs to go and when you go in and listen you may not listen hear anything for a long time but hang in there okay don't just hang up oh it's a hang up i want you to hang in there because i always get the voice at the almost at the end and it talks or it says something or it sings or that's where my sister's voice was and i was like oh there's my sister she must be on the other side and doing fine so um so anyway you can talk to them just like you you do now but try to communicate in different ways especially if you can't hear them and now when you have a loved one that passes um there's there's a couple of different things that people say. Some people say immediately that they'll be able to come and see you. And a lot of people, and this has been written for a long time, that they go through a process of, you know, of uh, almost like being in a hospital, getting acclimated to the other side and everything. So maybe it takes two weeks before you can get communication with them. I think just talk to them just like you would right after they pass. And if they're right there, they're going to hear you and um, whatever you say. And this is the one thing. So many people are in grief and they're like, um, they didn't get a chance to say goodbye. And I said, just say it, just say it. They can hear you, you know, type of thing. And the people do change when they transition, truly transition to the other side. They have gone through that process of knowing uh, what their life was about and their mistakes and all of that stuff. So when my dad, my dad, and I, I touched on it before was really, I called him the devil. He really was a horrible man in this, in this lifetime. And I knew when he transitioned that he saw himself in what part he was supposed to play in this lifetime you know, to learn lessons and us to learn lessons. And so I knew he was okay. So I could talk to him and have a whole different feeling after he passed. So we have to understand that that part. So when somebody is on the other side, don't worry about them. And they're, they're not going to harm you or anything if you happen to see them. And just talk to them, though. And just um, have conversations and let them be in your life. Hi, Vicki. Vicky, our fantastic um, uh, medium that we follow. <laughs> yeah. Right, so good to see you. So, Vicky, we're talking about like talking to the other side, talking, how do you talk to a ghost and different things like that? Darker entities, you better command them and get them out. And if you do any protections, put your protections in to keep them out because you really don't want those things coming in. Um, I have a girlfriend who bad stuff in that house, they're selling the house. The second one they're selling because, you know, they live in a wonderful upscale neighborhood and yet they had a vermin. So they had mice or rats uh, go into this, you know, almost million dollar house and up through the walls and into the attic and chew holes to try to get in. How does that happen? And they get exterminators, exterminators. So they move to another one and the same stuff started kind of happening. And not only that, she'd open the cupboard and the, the glass glasses would fly and crash to the ground or hit the wall. And then one time I, I kept telling her, you have to get out. And she tried all, a lot of Wiccan stuff. But as long as the dark stuff is in there and being fed by someone in the house, you're not going to get it out. And so the one day, the scary thing was she had 
a stove. Her stove wasn't old. She, like I said, this beautiful home. And um, she didn't, I don't think she had anything in the stove. It was not on, yet a fire started inside that stove on its own. Oh, wow. And that's why I said, look at your house is going to get, you know, burnt down. This, this is really, you need to get out of there. So they've decided that they, uh, you know, mold grew. I mean, everybody got sick. I telling you when you're around that kind of stuff, people get physically ill. They start getting sick. That one place up in Temecula that they wanted me to come into with my team, the dead talk. I, I just, no, I met with the lady and I first said, so uh, tell me, I'm going to just say, tell me who's had hysterectomies because I have hysterectomies. I have, I have people who are sick and I get hysterectomies. And she just went, she just about fell off the chair. She said, I left that house and it's hap all that stuff happening and everybody's sick, but I left that house. And she said, literally my insides fell out. Oh, the next wow. day and she should, and i said well i'm getting that that house is full of stuff uh full of bad things and full of entities and you guys have to uh they have to get out of there they have the kids are going to be sick they said everybody's sick in that house so that's another thing um but we only have 15 minutes so um i wanted to to tell you that um, when you talk to your angels and when you talk to God, it's just like you would be if you were in prayer and you just talk to your angels and I talk to them constantly and just, just asking them for help or whatever. They are there to help us. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask for too much, you know, like, oh, I, or for too, or for a small thing. I ask for parking spaces. They're there to assist. And, and and my sister said, I don't get it. I don't get it. She goes, whenever I go to the store, I'm out in the South 40. You guys are not acres away. And she said, you drive up and you park right in front every single time. I said, because I asked the angels to give me a parking space. And they do. And so ask them all those things and just talk to them just like they are you know, um, right there in front of you because they literally are. And, um, and as, let's see, your spirit guides, you're going to want to talk to them a lot and ask for their assistance so that you can connect and be, um, you know, using your intuition all the time and they'll help you with everything too. But if you were like me, so Andy, do you see, do you see, in your mind's eye, at least, you see uh, dead people, right? Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. That's how I see them. Okay. Um, Has it yeah. always been that way where you can just like. No. Um, th that's funny now that, you know, you bring it up that way because recently I've been seeing uh, with my physical eyes more often than it has been all year. Um, like, either shadows or, i i don't feel negative energy from this so it's like people walking by but it's more like shadowy wisp uh wispy so to best. speak yeah so and i'll like even earlier before i sat down i swear i glanced over and saw my deceased cat but she wasn't like i just felt that it was her i i, I she didn't look like her but with my physical eyes i did see that so this has been happening a lot more, and, and that's how I, I see it mainly. Well, let me tell everybody this. Andy probably was born psychic, and he was used to seeing things. Um, so, um, but not everybody sees stuff. But what I want to tell you, Andy, right now really fast is the fact that as we go through um, our stages of life, we do get the downloads of more gifts. So for you to be seeing more might be that, you know, they say the third eye opening a little bit more. It, right. it just being able to see more of them. Okay. Cause they're, it's not like there more are here. They're the same amount here, probably running around. You just get to see them now a little bit more. So hopefully you got a download and it's going to continue through your life in certain ways birthdays and things like that, that you become aware and get more. So um, 
Uh, Vicki says, I do talk with spirits every day. Yes, you do. And your loved ones can hear you. Absolutely, they can. And that's got to be a really big comfort for a lot of people that have lost someone in their life, that they they absolutely have to know that they are there and you can tell them everything you want. And Vicki is so uh, generous to do uh, mediumship readings on her um, uh fan page and on Facebook. And so you can go and join her group. And um, if you're at there at the right time, and she'll answer a question for you. And she, out of the blue, gave me information about my brother. That was just phenomenal, because I don't go looking for readings ever. And that was really sweet to hear. So thank you, Vicki. I'll, I'll be forever grateful with that message that you gave me. So let's go ahead and talk about if you don't see ghosts right now, if you don't see dead grandmas, I say, in all respect, I always say dead grandma. So um, this is how I did it. And um, because I go, I see, like Andy says, you know, the fast things, the shadows and things like that. But I really want to see them in front of me, like what everybody else is seeing. So I said, how can I do that? And I know that in my family, people see the ghosts solid and they see them see through. OK, like like um, like a veil or solid, just like they can't distinguish who's real and who isn't. And a lot of mediums tell me that also. So I thought, well, how can I do this? And I'm always like stepping out and trying something. And this absolutely worked because I have lots of validation in it. So what I did was I want all of you to think of, uh, it can be somebody alive, it can be somebody that's passed on, it doesn't matter. And think somebody that you really know what they look like. And it can be uh, a celebrity if you want. Okay, it can be anything like that. It can be a major figure uh, that everybody would know. So I across the across your room, I want you to envision that person standing there. Okay, but I want you to see their their head first and get their face. But you use somebody that you know exactly what they look like. And then you're going to look at them and you're going to bring the the face into focus. You got the face really good. You know what they look like and they're standing there. I want you to put the hair on and then I want you to to have the body form until you have them down there with their shoes and the whole body standing there. Now, do you really physically see them? You're mostly using memory in your eyes and getting it um, kind of a vision, right? So you're visualizing mm -hmm. that person, okay? And so I want you to look at what clothes they have on. What kind of clothes did, did you put on them? Is it uh, contemporary? Is it old fashioned? Is it from now? Is it from when they were young? So do all of, all of that and start looking at that person. And once you have that person, what you did with the visualization is what you're going to be doing later to see the spirits. So once you have that person, I want you to see, can you look around them? What's behind them? What's to the side of them? And see if you can expand that to they're in a room or outside. And what do you see around them? Okay. Now you practice that whenever you can something that you know or some person you can use the same person each time and till you really understand that you're connecting with this visualization with this vision okay now one day you're going to visualize okay let me visualize and then all of a sudden there's somebody else there that isn't what you visualize it's a different person let it come in let that person come in and see their face. And now you're going to be going, oh, I don't believe I did that. I don't believe in it. I'm just making this up. You're not. I want you to visualize this new person and see their face come in. Try to get their hair. Are they wearing glasses? Then keep going. Down the body. Okay. So you know it's a female or a male right away. Then the, the body. And what are they wearing? 
And then you're going to be surprised because sometimes you're going to go, oh, my goodness, they're wearing 1950s clothes. Or, oh, my goodness, they're wearing something for the 1700s. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. And just let your imagination go. And then once you have them established, the vision, you can see it. Then I want you to look around. And what do you see? Now, I did this one. Um, uh, what you're going to be able to do eventually is to take something, do psychometry and take something from someone, like the glass pair of glasses I have. And you're going to hold it, and you're going to get the energy off of it, and then stare, okay? You need to stare at a blank wall and bring the person in and relax and see them and then get their face okay i see their face and then get the rest of their body get their clothes and keep this in your hands if they give you something keep it in your hands and then okay i've got the person and then i want you to look around where is that person so i was doing that and now i had old-fashioned glasses i knew they were women's the grandmas you know that's going to happen you can't you know um even though i would have gotten it if it was contemporary but you know that gives you a hint and so i bring her in and then i go oh okay i see an apron on her i've got her dress and she's in a garden and i've got my client saying oh well she'll be cooking or whatever and i'm like i got her an apron but I got her in a garden and then I said what the garden looked like and what color was in the garden. And then I went over and I saw over here, here's the garage. Garage was detached. And what was in the garage? I go, oh gosh, we got a big fat car, like Dick Tracy car, big fat car. Right. And on and on and on and on, all the way looking around um, the, the yard, birdhouse and all the stuff. And it came out that she would have been in the garden because she had championship you know flowers red roses and all of that and they did have that car and so that is how you can start if you do not see ghosts or or people from the other side and you really want to see them i want you to stare at a blank wall and look at somebody familiar that you've seen that you know dead or alive i don't care the president, I don't care who it is, uh, celebrity, put them there. And you just have to know what they look like really well. And then look at their face, get their body. It's a visualization. Understand that you're not seeing them solid. You're going to just get it to where you can see them and place them in front of that blank wall and mm -hmm. put the clothes on them. And that's what you're going to be seeing eventually but they're not going to, you're not going to recognize the person. So practice doing that all the time until you bring in. And all of a sudden, let's say you're looking at a man, all of a sudden, here comes the woman and you're going, Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. I got somebody. Now you will get validation because you're going to practice. You're going to go out on the limb like everybody does. And you're going to, at some point you're going to have a girlfriend or somebody over and you're going to say, they're going to say, Oh, my grandmother passed or, Oh, here's my grandmother's neck necklace. I really like it. And then just say, can I hold it? And then I want you to find a wall that has a little patch of nothing. And I want you to hold on to it, rub it, whatever you have to do. Talk to your spirit guides and ask them for that intuition to come in. And just stare. And I don't care. I know that it's uncomfortable just to say, uh, I got her really thin. And I have long black hair here. And I know it's going on a limb, but you have to do it to practice. You And then once you go, they go, well, that's my grandmother. You just described her to me. And then you're going to go, oh, then you know that you can do this. And you can go and bring these spirits in. And the one thing that I found about doing this is that I can turn it off. There's a lot of mediums that can't turn it off. They're just seeing, I, I, um, I had a boyfriend a long time ago that was a fantastic medium. And he just see him all the time, coming in and out, in and out of the house, and stopping and talking or staring, you know, and all this stuff. And you can't turn that stuff off. Well, for me, I can go, okay, I'm going to open up to it, and I'm going to stare, and I bring them in. How do I know I'm right? I describe every everything I see. And they go, yes, that is, that
that's the dog, that's the cat, that's grandma, that's whoever. And then there you go. You're actually seeing them that way. And throughout your life, that may change to where you're going to really mm -hmm. see them around or see them solid. But that's a beginning to get them in. And you can depend on it. But you'll to be able to do that, you have to step out of your comfort zone and practice. So that is what I have for you guys. That's Look at great. That hour it, is gone. My goodness. Yeah. No, truly, um, Debbie, that's that's perfectly said how you explained it. Um, this is something anybody can do, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Got to so. practice. Was there any comments that I missed that I needed to respond to? Um. Oh. Let's see. So Vicky. Yep. Spirit will speak to you soon. Um, focusing and visualization, yes. Sometimes tell their name. Yeah. It depends on how traumatized they are. Right. And um, when we're doing mediumship, uh, Vicki, um, it's really funny because some people will just like take the photograph. And uh, my friend, uh, she, she got the photograph and she goes, oh, I get Norma Jean. And we're all looking like, well, that's Marilyn Monroe. Where'd you get that? And then when we were done, the client said, yes, my, my grandmother's name was Norma Jean. <laughs> we're like, oh, my gosh. Oh, but I was, wow. doing one, I was doing one the other day for a lady, and she was very skeptical until she, she came to me. And so this is her second reading, and I'm just getting all, you know, I, get, I, I do get a, a certain, I get a G, and, um, and then I said the name. And she, it wasn't like an old, old boyfriend. And she goes, how did you get that? Well, <laughs> the other side gave it to me. It just, you have to say it. You have to yeah. just go ahead and just figure your guessing and say it. Um, so, yes, Vicki, you're right. And um, especially if they're uh, earthbound and stuff, they're, um, uh, yeah, they're traumatized. And, and they don't, they're confused maybe as to, you know, where am I? And, you know what's going on and um and hopefully the one thing about being mediums and psychics and everything is that we get a chance to let them um uh, uh, get them some help get them rescued and and take them out of that state of um unrest and get them to a better place so well exactly. you guys thank you so much for watching tonight Friday's going to be fun, but um, I don't know if you're going on another little vacay. Yeah. Uh, and then, we'll miss you. Yeah. That'll be probably my last little summer trip mm -hmm. for a while. So. so I'll be doing yeah. free readings, free readings and giving away a gift card on Friday. And Jackie will be there with me. I don't think I have a, a guest, but you know, on the 20th, isn't it on the 24th? We have, we have the, uh, an angel uh, medium on and she'll be able to give you messages from angels and talk to you about any questions that you have about angels. She's going to be coming up. It's on my calendar. I don't have my calendar huh. here, but uh, I think it's the 24th. Um, uh, sometimes get snarky with you. Oh, gosh, when you're trying to figure <laughs> out things. Like I repeated, okay, you're in a prom dress. And she was like, I'm not in a prom dress. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, you know, they do have a sense of humor on the other side, too. Yeah. So, yes. And they can be really funny. Good, Carlos. I'm glad you're going to be there. And um, so, yeah, it'll be fun. We'll get something going. I'm going to reach out to Zoe again and see, because I really want her to come on and talk about the fairies. I can't wait for that one. And um, and then we do have somebody else that might reach out. We heard um, and, and, and be on a show as a guest. So that's going to be fun. Yeah. Please, uh, please, please, please. Get your stories in so that you'll be in for the drawing. The drawing isn't for the best story. It's just because you it's per entry. If you submit an entry, you get, um, it, you know, to get in the drawing. So please do that. 
we just we can't we can't wait to give that away so yeah, don't be um, shy don't be bashful get something in um and something that you're i don't know somebody told me a story today in messenger that was just creepy to me and you know and i hope to have it in the book i won't share it here but um <laughs> you know just get those things out we love to have it in you know and and you'll have a chance to win a lot of value in this three hundred dollars worth oh it's just fun. So. yeah i want the visa card <laughs> i'm in yeah you're welcome you're welcome so much okay we're ready to go to the lobby you guys have all right everybody stay safe and good night everyone you, okay? thank you bye bye